BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Welcome into Lobtown today. You got Ike Jones in here previewing the NCAA tournament. We've got Auburn versus Yale on the men's side. And in the women's side, we've got Auburn versus Arizona. Let's get straight to it. Y'all know how we do. Let's go into the town. The Auburn Express. You are now listening to The War Report. Log Town Podcast. With your boy Ike Jones. Lobtown in here, Ike Jones talking a little Auburn basketball, and I will be previewing both the men's and women's uh, games for the NCAA tournament. The women have a first four. Uh, play-in game versus Arizona tonight. The men take on Yale tomorrow in round one of the NCAA tournament. Let's get it kicked off in the traditional fashion and talk about this game uh, from the men's point of view, first and foremost. And um, Auburn's going to be taking on Yale, of course, as I've already said, in Spokane, Washington, a four versus uh, 13 matchup here, excuse me, um, a four versus 13 matchup. And um, let's just take a look at the head-to-head between these two teams and uh, talk about kind of what we should expect from this Yale basketball team. Uh, not a prolific scoring team. Uh, they are really going to be a team that's going to want to slow the pace down. 75 points per game is what they score, but they have, because of the pace that they play, been able to keep teams at a low amount of points themselves. 47% field goal percentage shooting team. Uh, they're pulling down 37 boards per game. They have 15 assists per game, 3.3 blocks, and six steals per game. Again, not the most prolific offense in the world, but they play the type of offense that really similarly to what you would see out of a South Carolina, honestly, when I think of this Yale team and, and, and look at kind of what they do statistically. I think South Carolina, uh, a team that's going to want to not push the pace too much. They're going to want to get in here and make Auburn try to be patient on defense and, and not gamble too much. They're going to be smart uh, with the basketball. They're not going to give up a bunch of turnovers, but they're going to just be methodical the entirety of the game. They play the typical five out offense that you see from a lot of the schools in that conference over there in the Ivy League, a lot of five out offense. And they're, they're no different at Yale playing the five out offense. Uh, James Jones, the head coach there at Yale, has done a good job of putting that program together. Uh, with the Ivy League schools, you tend to see a lot of guys not dealing with the transfer portal stuff because those guys go to Yale more for the academic portion, right? They really want to get the degree from an Ivy League school as opposed to going there for the express purpose of trying to play basketball and have that parlay them into an education. So you have guys that are growing up in that system that are playing multiple years and, and, and developing under the same coach. So you're going to see a team that really knows how to execute the stuff that they want to be able to do. Uh, 22 and nine on the season, and they are four and one. The number that you see here in parenthesis is the number of neutral site games they've played during the season. Auburn 7-1, and one, Yale is 4-1 and one in their neutral site games so far this year. But this Yale team, I think, is going to be very disciplined, is going to be one that Auburn is going to need to make sure they are being disciplined versus as well. Yale's played a couple of tough games so far this year on the road versus Gonzaga, on the road versus Kansas, so they are tested versus your traditional Power 5 teams and, and teams that have made the NCAA tournament. Now, they didn't uh, win either of those games. In fact, they were double digit losses in both of those games. But it does show that this is a team that is able to or is not going to be worried about the moment because they've played tough road matchups already this season. In fact, they led in both of those games early for the vast majority of that game versus Gonzaga. 
they were leading, and then they they were really giving Kansas a test early. So that's something I, th- I think Auburn fans need to expect, is that Yale could jump out early in this game and get a lead. But the question is whether or not they'll be able to hold that lead for the entirety of the game. And there's a lot of reasons why that could not be the case, but we'll definitely see what happens uh, as this game goes along. When you get into the stat leaders for each of the teams, we know what it is for Auburn if you're an Auburn fan for Yale. It really is going to be Wolf that's going to be the guy that Auburn needs to make sure they're keeping tabs on. Danny Wolf has been a prolific player for this team. The sophomore there at Yale is the leader in points, rebounds, and blocks for that team. A true seven-footer, so he's absolutely going to be a an issue in the paint as far as uh, making sure that Auburn is not going to get a lot of free looks at layups. Uh, I expect Auburn to pull him out of the paint a little bit in this game. Janai Broom showing the ability to stretch the floor. Uh, Auburn may go to a little five out themselves. It's something that Auburn has done a, a few times this season, and, and pulling Danny Wolf away from the paint is something that I expect them to see to expect to see from Auburn in this game. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not Yale decides to abandon what has been traditionally for them been strictly man defense uh, and go to more of a zone so that that Danny Wolf doesn't have to come and uh, be on the outside. But it's going to be, again, very interesting to see how the 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 defenses decide to play uh, specifically Yale's defense against Auburn. Uh, when you look at this game from the Vegas standpoint, Vegas has Auburn as a 13 uh, point spread right now. And, the money line is, is is tilting in the direction of Auburn, of course. Uh, the over-under, uh, Vegas is expecting a 77-64 to 64 type of game, uh, which I think is very possible. I think Auburn will 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 beat this, though, is, of Auburn shooting well. I, I expect Auburn to score more than 77 points in this game. Um, and the game over-under is at 100, 141 points. Again, your betting lines are brought to you by our show sponsor, BetUS, where the game begins uh the link is in the description if you want to sign up for BetUS, and you can get that 125% bonus uh, when you sign up for BetUS using our link. Let's get more into the matchup, and this is something that I started doing th- during the SEC tournament. We'll continue to do this during the NCAA tournament. And looking at the neutral site performances for each of the teams, the Auburn defense versus the Yale offense first and foremost. And uh, when you look at the Auburn defense, in neutral site games, the Auburn is giving up 67 points per game, just south of 67 points per game. And that's right around what Yale has been scoring in neutral site games, 67 points per game. So, you know, if Auburn does what they do and Yale does what they do, then you're going to see Yale score in the mid-60s in this game. Uh Free throw percentage, Yale is shooting around 73%. Auburn surrendering around 73%. Two-point percentage, Yale is doing a little bit better than what Auburn is surrendering at 49% to the 45 that Auburn typically surrenders. From the three-point line, Yale is shooting better uh, than what Auburn typically surrenders at 31 versus 26. Effective field goal percentage, Yale a little bit better, of course, from all of those numbers. Listen, Yale can shoot the basketball. Let's be clear about that. This is a team that offensively has the ability to stretch the floor. Uh, Really, they have three or four guys that can step out and shoot threes, including the aforementioned Danny Wolf, who is their leader in points per game. Uh, but they've got a couple of guys on this team who you need to be aware of if you're out there, uh, namely John Pulakitas. Uh, he is the junior 6'6 forward that they have there, or guard slash forward. Pulakitas has done really well shooting the basketball. I mean, he's he's up over 30% from three on the season for Yale. In fact, um, he is their leading three-point shooter. Actually, August Mahoney, I take that back, is the the – percentage-wise, the leading three-point shooter at 46.4%, right? Like Mahoney, uh, you know, at one point in time this season, I saw a statistic where he was shooting somewhere in, I think, in the last, uh, going into the Ivy League tournament, something like the last five or six games, he was shooting somewhere around 60% from three, which is ridiculous. Uh, But Pulakitas is shooting uh, uh, just south of 40% himself on the season at 39.3. Danny Wolf, again, the seven-footer, can step out and shoot threes. He's shooting 34% from three. And then uh, you've got Nick Townsend, who is the backup point guard, really, for them. Um, or excuse me, one of the backup forwards for them, who's shooting up over 30% from three as well. So they've got some shooters on this team that can absolutely spread the floor. And that's really what they want to be able to do is draw you out of the paint. Uh, again, run the, the five-out Princeton offense with a lot of uh, ball dribble handoff things. 
what you typically see defensively or what I saw defensively typically when I watched the tape of Yale is teams are playing kind of strict man and what they they do is they get those curls downhill off of the Princeton offense Auburn's going to switch a lot of that stuff and and I I saw that happen when I watched the Gonzaga film and they struggled with this when when Gonzaga went to a matchup zone or when they were doing a lot of uh switching on some of those high screens Yale's offense wasn't as proficient at being able to get downhill or really even get the post entry happening. So, you know, it's going to be, I think, a difficult proposition for this Yale team to get a lot of open looks, but they have guys that can shoot the ball in contested situations. Again, I really liked what I saw from Pulakitas in a couple of the games that I watched from him. Mahoney's more of a spot up shooter, but Pulakitas is a guy who can hit it off the dribble. Um, you know, he's got a good step back. I expect to see him factor in early in this game and maybe even surprise some of the Auburn defenders defenders and his ability to kind of get to his shots and, and get to some open spaces into the step back dribble and three is something I expect them to, to account for in the scout. Um, but when they're doing a lot of the switching out high, you have to be really cognizant of the fact that this guy's a shooter. So you need to make sure you're getting a hand up on him and really forcing him to get downhill so that you can get in there amongst the guys that can block shots for you defensively. So it's going to be interesting to see how Yale decides to change up what they do offensively to be able to combat what they weren't able to do against a team like Gonzaga, particularly, or Kansas uh, when they played them, because Auburn's going to switch everything, right? So you're going to have situations where you tip, you might have, you know, Janai Broom who's done a great job out there versus a guard. And then you're going to switch and you're going to have a seven footer and Wolf out top versus potentially a guard defending him. And are they going to be able, is Auburn going to be able to make sure that Wolf is not feeling comfortable in those positions? And Yale is Yale going to be disciplined enough to try to get the ball into the post uh, when they have those matchup situations. So uh, we'll see what happens in that regard. Let's flip it over to the other side and talk about the Auburn offense versus the Yale defense. This Yale defense is stingy. Right. 62 points per game that they are surrendering right now um, in neutral site situations. They are forcing teams into less than 40 percent on the interior. They're not a really big shot blocking team, but again, they do have a lot of length uh, and size on the interior, even with their guards. Right. They have, you know, six, four and up guards on this team that they're going to be able to bother the passing lanes and and be able to block shots. Uh, when you think about this team, Bez and Benga, uh, excuse me, Bez and Bang is the point guard for this team. And he is was an all conference defensive. I think he was the defensive player of the year in uh, the Ivy League. And he's guy. He's a guy that really sits down and defends well for this Yale basketball team. So it's going to be incumbent upon the guards from Auburn to be able to be discipline and what they do versus him because defensively he's going to be one of those guys that's going to force the issue on defense and he's really going to challenge you to make good decisions uh, in your offensive sets. Auburn scoring almost 85 points per game right now in neutral site games. It's going to be a challenge for this Yale team to stop Auburn and the many pieces that Bruce Pearl is going to deploy out there. Because I think the key to this game, and as it's been for the vast majority of Auburn games, is going to be the depth of Auburn versus Yale, who really only plays about seven players, right? They, they have about eight or nine in their rotation that they'll get in. But when you're talking about heavy minutes, uh, the vast majority of the guys that are playing in that starting lineup, that first five, are going to be playing over 27 minutes per game, right? So, so this Auburn team... Uh, and the depth that they're going to throw at you is going to be a challenge for Yale to keep up throughout the, a 40-minute basketball game. And I think that that's going to ultimately prove to be the reason why Auburn comes out victorious in this game is they have enough depth to make any late-game scenarios where Yale may have gotten out to a lead uh, evaporate because of that second wave that's going to be coming after you. So looking forward to seeing how Auburn offensively decides to attack this Yale defense. Again, uh, from, from the film that I watched, Yale is mostly going to be playing man defense. They're not going to be switching a lot. So look for the five-out offense from Auburn. Also, just look for them to do what they have been doing in the Bruce Pearl era and uh, coming off of that flex offense, right? A lot of that flex cut stuff is going to work if you're going to play strict man uh, because, you know, the the – the down screens, the back screens, uh, the cross screens, you know, the Iverson cuts, those things are going to have defensive players in trail. So this Yale defense is going to have to really step up their ability to play soundly against some of the screens that are going to be happening in the offensive sets that Auburn's going to deploy in this game. So 
it is one where Auburn should be able to go out there and handle business. When you look at the starting or the typical starting lineups, what have been the starting lineups for both of these teams, uh, you see here kind of what the size matchup is going to be. Uh, so in Bang, again, he is a 6'4 guard going up against Aiden Holloway there at 6'3. Uh, Holloway's going to need to play an efficient basketball game. This isn't a game where uh, Aiden Holloway's going to need to score a lot, right? Like he he's going to be called on to hit open shots. Certainly think that that's going to be strategically a thing that Yale's going to try to do is pack the paint and force Auburn to shoot perimeter basketball, uh, but or play perimeter basketball, I should say. So he's going to be called upon to do that. But I think the facilitation for Aiden Holloway is going to be the most important thing here. Um, and then I already talked about Mahoney as a spot up shooter. Uh, he's going to be matched up against Aiden, uh, excuse me, against Denver Jones primarily. Chad Baker Mazzara versus Noling. Noling's a guy who's kind of crafty in the paint. He's going to want to drive the basketball and and really get into his mid range game a little bit more than anything else. He's not particularly great at, at, at shooting three uh, pointers. In fact, on the season, uh, Noling is only shooting 14% from three. So he is really more of a drive guy. He's a downhill bat, um, guy. And, and, you know, Chad is going to need to be able to be, uh, if he's going to be matched up against him again, you know, Auburn's going to be switching a lot. So it's not going to be a one-to-one -one correspondence as far as I, I, this is my man. I'm going to be on him for the entirety of possessions. But just being aware that he's more of a downhill mid-range guy. Uh, Jalen Williams versus Pulakitas there. You know, that's a matchup that Auburn should be able to take advantage of just because of the physicality that Jalen Williams is able to bring in the post. I expect Jalen Williams to have a big game from the post in this one uh, because Pulakitas is more of a perimeter oriented guy. Uh, and just from a size perspective, this is a mismatch for Auburn, uh, frankly, Jalen Williams versus Pulakitas. And then Janai Broom, uh, though he doesn't have the height advantage, I think he has a an advantage in his ability to just be crafty at different levels of scoring. You know, I, I watched uh, Wolf versus the big uh, and Hunter Dickinson, Hunter Dickinson for Kansas and what they tried to do uh, in that game versus Dickinson, who I think offensively is more limited than Janai Broom in, in the variety of ways in which he can score. Uh, they tried to front the high post a lot in that game. And Wolf actually did a really good job on him early in that game. It's when they went to the bench that uh, Dickinson was really just kind of abusing the backup center there, and that's not going to be any different for Auburn. If they're going to have a backup center in there versus Janai Broom, not going to be a pretty sight. I expect him to dominate that matchup. But conversely, an interesting thing that I saw during that game is that the start Hunter Dickinson actually struggled a little bit with Wolf because Wolf has some guard skills. So he can pull you out away from the basket. Again, they play a five out offense uh, and he can step out. He can shoot the three. He can, you know, you know, front, excuse me, he can turn and face up from and drive downhill. He's got some handle and he can pass the ball really well out of the high post. Hunter Dickinson struggled a, a little bit early in that game for Kansas playing against Wolf. Now, Janai Broom, not the same kind of center as Hunter Dickinson, so I don't expect him to struggle. But the thing I wanted to point out is who gave Wolf trouble, even on the interior, was K.J. Adams for K Kansas, right? And he's 6'7". So I can see a scenario where you, you have – you know, Jalen Williams actually able to defensively play at the five in this game and give Wolf some issues out there on the perimeter. And Auburn could play a little small ball in this game. So this is one where if Jalen Williams stays out of foul trouble, he could play heavier minutes even at the five if they decide to do that in this game, even though he's giving up length to Wolf. I watched KJ Adams be able to go in there and physically uh, bother uh, Danny Wolf a little bit in that Kansas game and he was a big reason why KJ Adams a big reason why Kansas was able to start coming back in that game now McCuller had an absolutely crazy I think he scored like 40 something points in that game and that was offensively the thing but defensively what disrupted what Yale was doing was KJ Adams for Kansas so I could see Auburn potentially going into a Jalen Williams versus uh, Danny Wolf matchup at the five even though you have the backup center there in Dylan Cardwell but I'm just saying if there's a scenario where Auburn wants to go small ball they could absolutely do that play uh, Jalen Williams at the five you could play 
uh, Chad Baker Mazar or Chaney Johnson at the four, and then you know whatever you want to do at the three. Whether that is uh, you know you could even slide you know uh, you can go into a really small lineup and put Aiden on the uh, uh, floor at the same time. I, there's a lot of things that they could do. But anyway, I don't expect them to really have to go into that sort of scenario unless they're in foul trouble. But just something to look out for a Jalen Williams versus Danny Wolf matchup. Uh, looking forward to seeing what Auburn employs in this game and and how they're able to attack Yale again. I can see a scenario where early in this game, Yale jumps out to an early lead and, and people are wondering whether or not this is going to be a good proposition for Auburn. Uh, but I think the 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 depth of this Auburn basketball team and their ability to kind of weather whatever the early storm is going to be a key in this one. And Auburn comes out with the victory in this one. All right. Let's move over now and talk about the women's basketball team. And Auburn is taking on Arizona in this one. Auburn versus Arizona is going to be a slugfest, all right? This is not going to be a pretty offensive basketball game. This is going to be a, a, a war of attrition, right? Like who is going to be able to stop turning the ball over and who is going to be able in transition to get out there and play defense and stop the other team's transition, you know, uh, this basketball team for Auburn has struggled offensively in the postseason because teams have said anybody but honesty. And so it's going to be incumbent on Coach Harris and uh, their staff to figure out more creative ways to get the ball in honesty, Scott Grace in his hands, number one. And number two, figure out how to utilize her in ways that indicate we understand you're going to try to double team honesty or you're going to play some sort of box in one situation where you're going to zone up everybody else. All right, great. How can we utilize honesty and maybe having her bring the ball up the floor so they have the ball in her hands early? So if they're going to try to take the ball out of her hands, they got to do an early trap to try to get it out of her hands and change up what they want to do defensively in that way, game uh, in, in that respect. And are there going to be other people who are going to step up? I, I look in the direction of, you know, a. Taylin Collins, who needs to be able to take advantage of her athleticism on the interior to go out there and get some buckets. I look in the direction of a Sydney Shaw who can be able to get her own shot from the exterior and really light it up from the three point line. I'm looking at her and I'm looking at a McKenna Eddings who needs to be able to to continue uh, what she has built upon towards the end of the season and in the postseason of being able to get to her spots in that mid range pull up game and being a spot up shooter from the exterior. Those are three players that I absolutely think need to step up. And then you've got to figure out what you can get offensively, offensively from your guard position, right? So you've got uh, both of your point guards who are able to go out there and score, right? Uh, Jemiah Mingo Young came in as a scorer. She needs to be able to contribute offensively and give you, you know, 10 to 12 points offensively in this game. And then you have to get Marshawn Bostic involved offensively in some other way other than downhill. The question is going to be, is Arizona going to stay with playing man? If they're going to man up against Marshawn Bostic, she's going to be able to, to dictate a little bit more in this game. But if they're going to go zone, similar to what LSU did, and just say, hey, just leave her on an island out there and make her figure out how to score against the trees getting downhill, that's going to be a problem. So this Arizona team is going to need to take care of the basketball because if Auburn gets in transition, then Auburn is absolutely going to be able to, to, to get points in that way. But against Arizona's set defense, that's going to be a difficult proposition. The question is whether or not Arizona is going to want to play a little bit more zone in this game and, and try to make Auburn score from the perimeter and not be able to take advantage of the the – the fast guards that they have and, and the offense that they have that they run typically through honesty, Scott Grayson. Now they've been able to do it through throughout the season without having to go to too much a zone because they, they play the passing lanes really well and they get out there and they force turnovers and they, they, they sit down on defense. I expect this game to look a lot like what the Ole Miss game did earlier in this season for Auburn fans. Uh, if you go back and look at that Ole Miss game, it was an ugly game with a lot of turnovers, sloppy play, um, and one that Auburn had an opportunity to win. I just think that this Auburn basketball team is is hungry and ready to go out here and win this game. They should feel, and I've, if you've heard me talk about this before, they should before they should feel disrespected by having to play a play-in game. And hopefully that gets them coming in here and fired up for this game. If you're an Auburn fan and you want to see a fired up Auburn basketball team going out here playing with a chip on their shoulder and feeling as if they deserve to be in the field of 64. So let's go ahead and handle business and make that happen. But they get their opportunity to do that tonight versus the Arizona basketball team 
who's going to come in fired up themselves. And again, a fierce defensive battle is what I anticipate seeing in this one. Uh, when you look at the Yale team, uh, the leader for points for this team, really the, the, the do-everything offensively person for this Yale team is Martinez. Uh, she's averaging 11 points per game and six boards per game. Um, you know, she is going to be the one that Auburn's going to have to pay close attention to. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how Auburn decides to defend, you know, the 6-2 forward here for Arizona and Martinez because, you know, she's someone who can – I wouldn't call her a three level score because I don't think she's like a great three point shooter, but she can step out and shoot the three. Uh, but she shoots a good percentage from the floor. It's a 43 percent. But she's averaging heavy minutes for them. And this Auburn team is going to want to make her work to to be able to go out there and do what she wants to do. Uh, you know, she she's a force on the interior and. Uh, that's going to be a, a big matchup. I, I expect to see Taylor Collins matched up against her pretty heavily in this one because that's just what Taylor Collins has had to do all season. And she's going to draw the tough defensive defensive matchups for Auburn, and she's handled that really well. Um, outside of that, as far as this team is concerned, um, Paello is the, the the assist leader for this team, and she's kind of really the, the 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 engine on offense and defense. She's going to make life difficult for the guards for Auburn, and she's going to go out there and, and play a lot of pressure defense. She reminds me a lot of what you would see from a Marshawn Bostic as far as uh, pressure out high and, and really getting downhill and, and wanting to be a deferential player as far as passing is concerned. She only averages 10, uh, 9.4 points per game, but she's definitely uh, one that they are going to have to pay attention to offensively and, and keep her out of the paint, keep her out of the dribble drive scenarios, which Auburn has done a pretty good job against most teams. Another game where you, you kind of, um, you <clears throat> this is going to be another game where the guard play is going to be very crucial for both teams because I think as the guards go, so go this game. If your guards are playing well, then your team is probably going to win this one. So again, I think the play from the guards in uh, Jemiah Mingo Young and in uh, Marshawn Bostic is going to be crucial as to whether or not this Auburn team is going to come out with the victory versus Arizona. Um, looking forward to seeing this matchup, and hopefully Auburn is able to come out with the victory and then they advance, if they do, to play Syracuse, which is going to be a difficult one. And we'll preview that matchup as it comes along as well. But that's it, man. I'm going to get out of here. Appreciate you all jumping inside of Lobtown with me. Share this content before you get out of here. Make sure you give us a thumbs up on the video. And uh, we'll be back at you with some post-game reactions for Auburn versus Yale coming up tomorrow. Um, but until the next time, and as always... War Eagle.